We're glad you're here, whether you're watching online. If you're watching online today, I want to really challenge you to listen in because I, I think today really applies. If you're here today, uh, you're already doing part of what we're talking about. Uh, but the other part, I want to challenge you to listen in tightly and closely because I, I believe God wants to really build a family within the family here. God wants you to have people in this body that you know, that you call by name, that you know what their prayer requests are, what their hurts are, and how you can help them. He wants you to know the praises. Uh, one of the best things from the 21 days of prayer and fasting was what you saw in the video, how as pastors we got together and prayed for each other, encouraged each other, got to learn what God was up to in other churches and celebrate all that together. And all, all that participated said they were gonna be back next year and uh, we're praying we can double the number of churches we had this year. And today we're continuing on a sermon series called Chain Reaction. If you got your listening guide, you can pull that out. We're gonna be in Acts chapter two today. Now the idea of chain reaction is that the steady decisions that we make, daily or weekly decisions we make, build habits and impact our everyday lives for the rest of our lives. That by getting into the habits that God gives us, that we can begin to grow in Christ and be able to make the decisions that will shape not just our lives, but our family lives, our friends' lives, and our community's life. And so that's what we're praying for. We're praying that God grows us in that way, builds this family together, and brings a chain reaction. Uh, the example I wanted to use today was of, of the Pony Express. Have you heard of the Pony Express? Pony Express became famous, but do you know it only lasted 18 months? I didn't realize that until I studied it. I thought it was something that went on forever, but it wasn't. Uh, there was a season in the life of our country where there was no way to get word from the East Coast to the West Coast in a quick manner. It would take up to two months before people figured out things like who the new president was of the United States. Because the railroad stopped in Missouri so they could get it to Missouri fairly quickly, but the next 2,000 miles was being delivered by stagecoach, which was hit or miss and pretty slow. So someone came up with the idea, well, what if we de developed the Pony Express? And they set up stations every 10 miles from Missouri all the way to California, and what they do is they'd have a fresh horse every 10 miles, and a rider would get on the horse and he'd ride 10 miles, swap horses, 10 miles, swap horses. He would ride 10 different horses in a day, and then he would swap off to the next rider who would take the mail from there to the next one. Shrunk it down to 10 days from two months. Pretty amazing. Uh, they even found out that President Lincoln was elected in the same month that he got elected, a new thing. So this Pony Express depended completely on a chain reaction. If one person didn't show up to do their job, it stopped the whole process. If the people behind the scenes that were taking care of the ponies didn't take care of the ponies, it stopped the whole process. You had to have the chain reaction of all those riders and all those ponies and all the behind the scenes people to get to the final destination. Make sense? Matter of fact, they came up with, a, with an alleged uh, advertisement to try to reach young men who wanted to be on this great adventure. It says, help wanted, young, skinny, wiry fellows, not over 18, <laughs> must be expert riders, willing to risk death daily, <laughs> orphans preferred. <laughs> Boy, that's a real encouraging job description, wouldn't it? <laughs> Can you imagine Walmart posting that on the side? <laughs> Needing greeters, <laughs> be prepared to die. <laughs> it could get dangerous out there. Well, the call that God gives us can be dangerous as well. The call he gave the disciples cost all of them but one, their physical life. And I wonder as I think of Christ and inviting them into the journey, how that must have been very difficult because he knew the call for them was a call to come and die. For you and I, we haven't had that experience. No one in here has come to die as they've joined the church or served the church. But it is still true all around the world that there's a risk 
in being the church. There's a risk in following Christ. Well, today we're gonna look at the early church who grew despite the persecution and the risk, who because of a couple things they did, they saw the good news of Christ explode outside of Jerusalem into all nations, not just stopping with the Jewish person, but reaching into people who were not Jews. We refer to those as Gentiles, and probably almost all of us in this room today would be referred to as Gentiles. We are not of Jewish origin. And this good news that Christ brought was for you and for me. Now, if you got your Bibles, we're in Acts chapter two. Now, the book of Acts is an amazing book. If you have never read the Bible, you might even wanna start in the book of Acts uh, because it talks about the acts of God through the local church from the beginning after the resurrection of Jesus and what they did and how that came to be. And what we read in the book of Acts is much of what we base the principles of our church on even today, some 2,000 years later. So, Acts chapter two, we're gonna, it's on page 907 of the Burgundy Bible, if you don't have your own. Now, I will say, uh, I've had a chance, I went to a conference last Monday, and I didn't take my Bible in, and I pulled my phone out, and I have discovered, you can use your Bible on the phone app, uh, but... Man, it's easy for me to get, get, get distracted, right? You got the, the text messages that come in, you got the things that pop up. So you might wanna just consider bringing your good old paperback Bible in with you to take notes with. I, I found that for me, that's less distraction. If not, there's a Burgundy Bible in your seats. You can take it with you when you leave. Uh, we'd love for you to do that just so we can supply you with a Bible. But it's in page 907 of that one. It'll also be on the screen. Uh, I'm gonna start with verse 41. It actually says uh, 42, but I'm gonna back it up to 41. It says, those who believe what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over all of them. And the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and invite God to speak to us about these things. Lord, I just thank you. I thank you that we get to like see a snapshot of the early church. I thank you, Lord, that it's not complicated, that it's really quite simple, that you call us to love you, love each other, and love this world. And so I pray, God, that your Holy Spirit would speak to each one of us today and that you would nudge us, whatever we're choosing to ignore as part of your word, that you would reveal it to us. Whatever we are fighting against, that you would show that to us. And whatever we got it figured out, that you would affirm us. Uh, but at the end of the day, Lord, I pray that we would just have a greater hunger for you. Pray that in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I was trying to think of a creative way to teach this, and I heard this phrase, circles and rows. And it made sense to me. So the first one, if you got to listen to God, is rows. God calls us to be in rows learning the apostles' teaching. That's what we see uh, here in 42. It says they are listening to the apostles' teaching. Uh, so what does that look like? Well, you're doing it right now. All throughout this room, there are rows of people, and you're here coming, listening to the word. Now, whoever's bringing the teaching, this week it's me, last week it was Brian, needs to come with the teaching from the word of God, okay? Wherever you go, if you travel around the country, it always amazes me when I have people come to the church and they say, wow, I really enjoyed that. You, you actually preach from the Bible. 
And in my mind, I'm like, where else would I preach from? Because you sure don't want me to preach from my opinions. You know what I'm saying? That's dangerous territory. Because I can have opinions about everything, but my opinions don't matter. But the Word of God has been with us for over 2,000 years. And it's proven itself to be true, divinely inspired by God, encouraging each one of us, teaching each one of us. And so you're here today and you're in rows. You're here to listen to the, to the Word of God. So in, in that regard, you're already doing a big part of it. For those watching online, I would challenge you, maybe you're all around the country and, uh, you know, California, Tennessee, Michigan, I would just challenge you to try to find that local body where you can be a part of the rose and jump in and listen and learn. God calls us to be in this local body and to be in the rose. So what were they teaching? Well, they were teaching how to love one another, weren't they? says they met in one place and they shared everything with each other. So they met in the temple. Uh, it tells us that in 46. Now, some people say, well, I don't like big church. I've had a lot of people that have come to the river and said, ah, I like this, I like that, but I'm just, I just don't like a big church. Well, you would not have liked the New Testament church because 3,000 people got saved in one day. You talk about chaos. Oh, my word, what did the disciples do with 3,000 people? They didn't have the internet. They couldn't send out texts to organize people. They didn't have a church building. They basically said, uh, we'll be back at the temple tomorrow to teach if you want to come. And thousands of people are coming to be taught. And then they're like, well, well we really need to get to know each other. So then they were like, well, we'll meet in houses. That's it, we'll meet in houses. Now, understand, this was revolutionary, they didn't do that as Jews. They went to the synagogue and the temple. Those were the two places they went. This was something God was doing a new work. He was encouraging them to get to be in relationship where they loved and supported one another. This idea of the rose is important. You're called to be here. We come here to worship. Brian talked about worship last week, right? That we bring honor to God, we bring praise to God, whether it's through our singing, through the reading of scripture, whether it's through our dedication of baptism, whatever it may be, we come here with those things in mind to honor God. Now it also said that, that they met needs, that people had everything that they needed. And I would say to you, giving is an important part of worship, that we give to meet the needs of those in the body. We give to take the gospel forward we're going to talk about that next week. I'm going to give you an advanced warning. Next week, I'm going to talk about the daily practice of serving God through giving. So if only half of you come back, I'll know why now. Uh huh. I don't know why, but I gave you a warning about it, so I'm just telling you. But it's one of those practical principles God gives us to make us more like him, the one who gave the greatest gift in his son, the thing most precious and most important to him, that we might have a relationship with him. Well, the early church, they like brought stuff together as a whole. 3,000 people coming together to take care of the needs. Matter of fact, if you travel on later in Acts, we see that they were missing some widows, that the Grecian widows were complaining because they weren't getting enough stuff. They weren't being provided for, but the Hebrew widows were. And so the apostles wisely then appointed men who had, most of them had Greek names to oversee the distribution of the food. They chose to meet the needs of those in the body. We do that as well. We'll talk about that again next week, how through our giving, we get the privilege of meeting needs. And then it says they worship together in the temple. How did they get 3,000 people? The temple was smaller than our building. It was smaller than what we used to worship. And so they must have been like in the outer courts and rotating everybody in and out on a regular basis. Like, okay, you and your family, you start with A, B, or C on your last name, then you're gonna be there on Mondays. D, E, F, you get Tuesdays. I, I don't know how they did it, but we know they couldn't get them all in that space at one time. So they had to do like we're doing, which is be creative, which is we have three services on Sunday morning. Uh, 8, 9.30, and 11.15. And so 
Uh, we also are offering the online option for folks when they have to travel out of town or if they're not able to find a church right away. We want to get the word out. And roads are important to do that. Now, let me tell you, if you ever have to move away, you need to ask the Lord for a church that preaches the Bible, okay? Don't settle, settle for anybody that's not preaching the Bible because this world is changing so quickly, culture is changing so quickly, and if you take your eyes off the Word of God, you're gonna totally lose the understanding of what the intention of God is for man. But if we stick with his word and we come together, we will be like iron sharpening iron and growing together. So that was the first part, is they met together in rows. The second is circles. Circles, now this is equally as important. Neither one is any more important. Circles, they met together for fellowship, for the sharing of meals and prayer. And so for us, we call these life groups. That's been our primary form for years is life groups. They meet in homes, they break bread together with either a dessert or a meal, and they pray for one another and study the Word of God. Now, just by sheer numbers, probably only maybe a third of you guys in here are in a life group. And so please hear me, I am not here to beat anybody down. I'm not here to make you feel guilty at all. I'm just here to tell you, you, you're missing out, just sincerely, because it's not just about the rows where we study the Word of God, but we need each other, and we're better together. Now, some of the reasons we're better together, you're not going to like, because some of the reasons we're better together is because when you're in a life group, you don't always get along with everybody in life group. You don't always agree with everybody in life group. Some might even get on your, your nerves a little bit. And you know what? That's called learning how to love others. Because the truth is, nobody in this room is perfect. And matter of fact, I, I joke about this, but it's kind of true. If you're in a life group or a small group of some sort, and there's not at least one person that kind of gets on your nerves, it's probably because you're that one person. <laughs> that gets on everybody's nerves. <laughs> it hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> And I found that sometimes I'm that person because I can talk the whole time if I'm not careful because I just, I like to talk. But the goal is not to talk in a life group. The goal is to fellowship, to learn, study together, sharpen one another, and grow, to support one another. We see that here. We see that in these circles that they got together. So in verse 42, you see uh, fellowship. What is fellowship? Fellowship. It's just building friendships. They hung out together. They spent time together. They went camping together. I don't know that they had campers. But they went camping together. They went to the coffee shop together. Maybe they had matzo bread. I don't know what they had back then. They spent time together. They built friendships. They, they shared meals. Uh, one of my favorite parts of my life group is we share meals. Now, my, my Tuesday morning men's group, we don't share meals because we get together. We, we're there from 6 to 7. We have a, a couple of minutes of talking, then we go into the Bible study. We, we communicate back and forth, challenge each other, encourage each other. Then we break into threes, and we pray for each other, and then we go to work. So it doesn't get the food aspect. And, and I hate that because I love food, and I think food really builds relationships. But in my life group we have on Tuesday nights, we have food, and then we have Bible study, and then we have prayer, and then we have fellowship after that even then. And so it's a gift. It's a gift that God's given us in this, this place because especially men, so few of us have places that we talk to people about real issues in our life. And I'm so grateful for my life group where we actually go, man, pray for me. I had a bad week with my kids this week. It was just rough. I, I didn't do a great job of being a good dad. Or pray for me. I'm in a broken relationship with a friend that I went to high school with, and I don't know what happened, but we're sideways. Pray for me. Or, or pray for me. I, I'm struggling at work. I don't want to be there. I don't want to go anymore. I'm getting bitter. I'm getting angry. I'm bringing it home. Pray for me. And I believe we all need that place, that circle, where we can be real, transparent, and find encouragement. 
And I, I didn't say this first service, but I had somebody come to me and go, Steve, please tell everybody, one of the things they're missing out on if they're not in a life group is the celebration. The, getting to hear the answered prayers in other people's life as well. Getting to see the breakthroughs in families as their kids are getting it or their spouse is getting it. Getting to see the miracles that God does. Tell them, Steve, let them know that by being in life group, we get to see those things as well. I was like, you're right, Jeff, you're right. So those are things we get to have. Now, they met in homes and we do that. I don't know how many, we got probably over 30 groups that meet in homes. And I encourage you to do that. But we've realized that not everybody can meet in homes. And so we, we started a group here. It's going on right now. It's meeting upstairs, for, especially for people that, that commute here. They, go to first, they can go to first service or third. And we have what we're calling a commuter life group that meets upstairs. We have groups on Wednesday nights for men and for women that act as life groups without the food. We have groups that meet like my men's group that meets at Gunnel's Florist, above Gunnel's Florist, in the space above Gunnel's Florist, as they share that with us. So we've got all these different groups, and we're trying to start even more. We started a group on Thursday nights for folks who are unmarried, fastest growing demographic in our country is folks who are unmarried, and trying to provide a place there where they can study the word, build friendships in a healthy manner, and and have folks to, to fellowship with together. Uh, 55 plus, we're trying to start a group for 55 plus. Uh, to where, where those that are possibly retired, just being transparent, most of them are in the eight o'clock service because they're early risers, right? Uh, but we have a, fo- a ministry that we're trying to launch there. And then widows. Uh, we've started two widows groups, pretty much the widows themselves, just the uh, Lord allowed them to begin to get together. And so this tomorrow night, our deacons are having a widow's dinner to love on our widows and help provide for them. Just these are things we're doing to help build this fellowship, build a place of growth and a place for spiritual growth together. Now, are they perfect? Definitely not. They're not because people are in those groups, okay? We tried to have perfect groups, but we had to take all the people out and so it made no purpose of having the group, right? We just had an empty room. Because everybody comes to a group with baggage. Some have church baggage, some have life baggage, Some have relationship baggage, some have friendship baggage, and some come and they're scared to death to even be there. But I want you to know, you gotta take a risk if you're ever gonna find that community, that peace, friends that in good times and bad will love you through it. Well, the last thing is that rows and circles equals God's mission fulfilled. Rows plus circles equals God's mission fulfilled. In the scripture, we see that God's mission is being fulfilled. It says that people were added daily, those who are being saved. When we are doing rows and circles, community is taking place, love is taking place, support is taking place, encouragement. Verse 42, it says God's power was manifested in miracles. I was thinking about that, man, I. I'd love it if the Lord gave me the gift of healing. Just being transparent, I prayed for it for years. I was like, Lord, there's so much hurt in the world. Can you give me the same gift the apostles had where they said they would lay people on the streets just hoping Peter's shadow would fall on them so they'd be healed? That'd be pretty awesome in my mind. My first thought would be going to Labonner Children's Hospital, Vanderbilt Children's Hospital, you know, St. Jude, just going and just walking through and healing all those kiddos. But then when you look at what Christ did, he realized that physical healing is amazing, but spiritual healing is even more important. We can all be the most physically healthy in the world and be miserable, am I right? And all of us have the chance to offer spiritual miracles to people when we pray for them, when we encourage them, when people come to the hope of Jesus Christ, those are the miracles I get to see on a daily basis. And I'm so thankful for it. At the river every week, every week we have over 130 teenagers here on Wednesday nights, learning about Christ, growing in Christ. Every Tuesday night we have over 140 college students learning about Christ and growing in Christ. For those who say young people aren't interested, I I don't agree. 
I think that there are challenges, yes. There are distractions, yes. But I think that every person born is created with a vacuum and they, they desire God and desire to know God. And it's up to each one of us to live it out in such a way that they see how to have that relationship. They need circles and rows, and we model that. Matter of fact, our college ministry and youth ministry, we have the large group in rows, and then we have the small groups as well. Circles and rows. And then it said that God's love was displayed. God's love was displayed. People's needs were being met. And I'm so grateful for a church where I see God's love being displayed. Our life group right now is in the middle of a volunteer project. We're, we're working with a single mom's house, one working on it. It's been fun doing that. We have other life groups who serve heavily, whether it be with Rising Above or, or different ministry organizations. We have some who serve together on Be the Church Day. And these are just ways that we can do this circles and rows. And then in the end, the goal is God's mission will be fulfilled all around the world. That it would start here and go globally. Uh, so grateful for the end of COVID that we could start our, our trips back overseas. And I've already been to Cuba, Central Asia, Ivory Coast. We want to keep taking trips. We have people that we're sending on different mission trips around the world. And we believe that God has entrusted us as a church with so many resources, so many people, so much hope that we've got to get that good news globally around the world. And so I, I just want to challenge you, circles and rows. What do you do if you're here today and you're in a row, but you're not in a circle? First step is reach out and say, I'd like to, I'd like to find out more. There's a card in front of you. Uh, it's a way. You can fill that out. You can get on the River app. You can go to the connections table afterwards. And my challenge to you today, is because you're here, you're doing the rows, right? And I want to encourage you to continue and then my second challenge is to find a circle. It doesn't even have to be in the river. Listen, my wife did community Bible fellowship for years and loved it, and it was such a great tool for her to grow in Christ. It could be a group of men or women at work where you get together and pray for each other at lunchtime once a week and read the Bible and encourage and pray for each other. There are many different opportunities. The key is each one of us needs something more than just right here on Sunday morning. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray for you today. The invitation is simple today. Find a circle. That's the invitation. If you're here today and you've never come to know Christ, there is an invitation as well. And that is the prayer room will be open after the service in the back. And if you'd like to know Jesus Christ and you've never discovered him, maybe this is your first time here, we wanna help you do that. And a great way to do that is to talk with somebody and learn more. And so we'll have the prayer room open to have that conversation. But for the bulk of folks today, it's a circle and not a row. Pray with me. Lord, we come before you and we thank you that you had this genius idea of the thing called the church. And Lord, I love Sunday mornings. I, I probably love it more than anybody else here. I just get excited I love preaching, but I love seeing everybody. I love your word. And Lord, thank you. Thank you for the amazing time of singing worship to you, God. It's, we are just so grateful we have the freedom to do this in our country. And Lord, thank you for all the folks that want to do that each week. Then Lord, we pray. We pray for all those that have yet to find a circle that they can connect in. God, I ask that you would show them that, that literally that they would want it and they would find it, a place of true community with prayer and Bible study and encouragement and strength. I pray for that for each person in the room, God, uh, because I know how much it means to me to be in those groups and how much it helps me. And Lord, I know it's in your word and you instruct us and teach us circles and rows. So we thank you and we pray, God, that you would use us mightily in your hands and to teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you notice I got done a little bit early this morning. It's because I need to have a family moment. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of shoot from the heart this morning and hope I don't mess it up too bad. 
So uh, about two and a half weeks ago, a friend of mine who pastors another church in town found out that there was gonna be a drag show close to their church. And so he called me up, said, hey, would you come to a city council meeting with me? Uh, there's gonna be a drag show, and according to the way I read the city ordinances, it's in, it's, uh, it's in opposition to the way the city ordinance is written. There's not supposed to be something like that within a 1,000 feet of our church. Would you come to city council with me? I said, yes, and there were about 10 pastors that were there, and, and he spoke, uh, Scott from First Baptist spoke and just shared the concerns and asked the city council to consider that, and uh, then we left that night. And they went ahead and had the drag show the Sunday following, which was two weeks ago from today. And my wife reached out to me after the service was over, third service, and said, hey, you won't believe what's going on downtown Cookville. I said, what's going on? Well, apparently these hate groups came in and decided this would be a good time for them to be on display, hating on the people at the drag show who also had a group come in for them and literally they were yelling at each other across the street. And so Melissa told me about that and I was like, that's not okay. That's not who we are as Cookville. That's not how God's wire does. And so I drove by there after church, didn't know what I was gonna do except pray. So I went to pray and stood off to the side away from any of the, the people that were yelling and screaming at each other and then when one of the groups left, I, I walked in front of the donut shop where they had been standing to talk to two other people who'd been praying. And uh, at that time, somebody snapped my photo and then cropped it in on a Facebook post right in between like the guy with the swastika from the hate group and the other people from the hate group and posted it saying that I was there with the hate group and that I was uh, shouting these obscenities and stuff at people. and. Uh, I didn't say they're shouting obscenities. They just said I was standing with the hate group in support of that. And so that went out across Facebook. And Monday, I didn't know anything about it till Monday morning, my texts start blowing up. Hey, have you seen the post about you on Facebook? Have you seen the post? And I don't get on social media a whole lot. So I was like, no, but I'll look at it. I looked at it. And, and they had cropped it where I was standing under the Ralph sign but it didn't show, which it would have shown if they'd have shown the whole picture, that there was, no, there was no hate group next to us. It was after they had left. And so what do you do, right? We talked about sending out a Facebook post, defending it, and just felt like, you know what? Just don't stir it up. And so we let it go. And then uh, the next week, this last Thursday, there was a, another city council meeting to discuss it again. And uh, I, I chose to go to that city council meeting just to pray. Now, if you don't know, I mean, we've had protests here. I went to the Black Lives Matter protest, and I went and prayed and passed out water bottles. When Roe v. Wade was overturned, I went to the Roe v. Wade protest and passed out donut holes. The house wasn't open this time, so I couldn't pass out donut holes. But I, I just believe that God calls us to prayer. I believe that prayer moves mountains. I believe that what we're in is a spiritual battle, not a flesh and blood battle. There's nobody in this town that is my enemy. You and I may disagree completely on social matters, morality, what you think about God or church, but I can still treat you with love and with respect. And there are people, let me say this, who disagree with my position on, I don't want drag shows in my town, they do, but there are people that knew me and my family, and, and they posted in opposition to the slander, and I'm grateful and thankful for them doing so. But at the end of the day, I just want you to know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray. And I don't know how many more photos I'll get put in. I just want you to know my heart and what I'm about and why I'm there. I went to city council this last Thursday, and. And uh, a lot of folks were expressing statements about city council and all this. And I just felt compelled again. I know it's hard to believe, but I felt compelled to say something again. <laughs> now, I could probably stay out of a lot more hot water if I could keep my mouth shut. But you can go online and, and hear what I said at city council. 
Well, basically, I just challenged everybody. I mean, I've, I've coached soccer in this town for 20 years, and I love everybody's kids. I don't care what their background is. I, I don't care when I'm doing business. I mean, whatever that looks like, I believe we treat everybody with love and respect. I may disagree with you, but I don't agree with my wife on everything either, right? She'll say that she doesn't agree with me on everything. And we love each other deeply. And we don't have to disrespect respect each other because we disagree on something. There was a day when we could carry on kind debate in this country without having to go for the juggler and insult one another. Somewhere we've lost a lot of that. But I want to challenge us that in our town and in our church, we can do it differently. That we can speak to people that we, we very much disagree with their position. And I said that at the town council. I was like, listen, I'm one of those guys that doesn't want a drag show in my town. I'm not going to lie to you. That is my position. But I also want to tell you that when I, when I talk to you, I will treat you with love and respect. Even if we disagree on where we're at on this matter. You're welcome, brother. Thank you. That's good. (laughs) It's okay. Uh, And I just want to challenge this, guys, because I found out on Thursday after at the meeting that these one of these hate groups didn't just come to rouse donuts, but they actually went to our historic African American community here and got out, and they're all black in their, their mask. And one of our brothers and sisters in Christ churches had to shut their doors and go into lockdown because of fear of what was about to happen. That's not okay, people. Not in our town, amen? And so I just want to challenge you, as you go out this week in the town, let us promote love, respect, That doesn't mean we have to give up what we believe about truth and the word of God. It just means how we do that will look way different than how the world does it, okay? All right, Dean's gonna come and close. And if y'all have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to me. I'll be here afterwards. And I just wanted you to know the the whole story and, and for you to be praying for our city. Dean, tell me. Hey, thanks so much for watching online this morning. We want to be able to connect with you. And the best way to do that is to go to online.theriverCC.com. They have a smorgasbord of information there. You can find out about our ministries. You can find out about how to give. You can find our YouTube channel, just all the things that you need to know about us. And that way we can find out some things about you. Again, thanks so much for watching today and have a blessed day.